What does Kalkwasser do to a reef tank and will it make your corals grow faster and look healthier? Well today we're going to take a look at just that. Now Kalkwasser has been used in saltwater aquariums for years with great success and experienced reef keepers like Than from Tidal Gardens, Ryan from BRS TV and Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture all regularly sing its praises. And apart from being the cheapest way to dose calcium and alkalinity to your reef tank, Kalkwasser also boosts the pH level of your water. Because our reef tanks absorb the CO2 we breathe out, most reef tanks have a suppressed pH level. The pH of a healthy coral reef will be somewhere in the order of 8.3, whereas most saltwater aquariums will be significantly lower and therefore more acidic. And nine months ago before I started dosing Kalkwasa, my pH would swing from about 7.75 to 8.14 each day. And to put that in context, reef keeping scientist Randy Holmes Farley reports that corals can even start to dissolve at some point below a pH of 7.7. So what has nine months of dosing Kalkwasser done to my pH level? Well, within two months of starting, it had gone from a low of 7.75 to a low of 8.21, and from a high of 8.14 to a high of 8.38, which on the face of it might not sound like much of an improvement, but pH is a logarithmic scale, so a pH of seven is 10 times more acidic than a pH of eight. And that means that going from 7.7 .7 to 8.2 has made my water five times less acidic. On paper then the numbers look excellent, but corals don't grow on paper. So let's take a look at the actual difference it's made. First up, let's talk growth. Now I have high phosphate levels of around 0.3, which almost certainly stunts growth in my tank. And yes, I mean 0.3, not 0.03, which is the more normal desirable level. But despite that, my corals uptake of calcium and alkalinity increased dramatically within just a month of starting Kalkwasser. Now you can only add as much calc to a reef tank as the fresh water you lose to evaporation each day. And on my tank, that means I add around three liters of Kalkwasser per day. And because I have so many high demand SPS corals, they need more calcium and alkalinity than three liters of Kalkwasser can provide. So I also dose two pop in the form of ATI Essentials Plus. And when I started dosing calc, I was dosing 25 milliliters of ATI Essentials per day, but that went up to 60 mil within a month, which is more than double. And it stayed that way nine months on, and I'm currently dosing 70 mil of ATI Essentials per day, despite recently having removed over a third of the corals in my tank as part of a major rescape. Now that rescape has made it a little bit difficult for me to show you before and after shots, because a lot of the corals I took before shots off have now been moved on. But I still have quite a few, so let's take a look at them. Now you'll make your own mind up as to whether or not this represents good growth, but my thoughts are that some of the growth is very good indeed, while other growth is solid, if unspectacular. But I put that down to my high phosphate levels, as well as the fact that I've changed my lights twice in the last nine months, which no doubt sets the corals back as they need time to adjust to the new spectrum spread and intensity of light. And despite that, what I can say is I definitely feel like I notice better growth now. And part of the reason I chose to remove over a third of my rockscape was because my corals were growing so damn fast. And if you want to grow Montipora, in my experience, they absolutely love Kalkwasa. I mean, you can practically see the stuff growing in front of your eyes. And even my nemesis Tropic Thunder Monty that I ripped out months ago has now started regrowing from nothing more than a speck. So all of that combined with the huge increase in alkalinity consumption tells me that Kalkwasa has definitely resulted in a significant increase in coral growth, which on its own is a good enough reason to dose Kalkwasa. But many of us are more interested in coral health and coloration than growth, so let's take a look and see what calc's done to that. Now, as you can tell, I'm a huge advocate of Kalkwasa and I want to encourage its use in the hobby. So at this point, I would love to tell you that it has made a huge difference to the coloration of my corals. But to be honest, I haven't really noticed a significant difference in coral coloration. Although to be fair, one or two of my corals do look significantly better. But while the growth can only be down to Kalkwasa, the color improvement could just as easily be down to different lighting or fluctuating nutrient levels in my tank. So while I think Calc might have improved some of my coral colors, I couldn't say that's the case with any conviction. And even if the difference is down to Calc, we're talking small improvements of maybe 10%, which isn't really noticeable, especially compared to the 100% plus increase in calcium and alkalinity uptake and therefore growth. However, I have noticed a significant improve in coral health. While my SPS corals have always looked generally good, I've never had great polyp extension. 
but that has all changed since I started dosing calc. And I'm now seeing polyps on many of my SPS corals that I only ever used to see if I turned my lights on in the middle of the night. The best examples of this are on my Acropora tenuis and my Strawberry Shortcake Acropora, which look a lot more shaggy than they ever have before. But it's not just them, and a number of other corals also look healthier than ever. And it's been great to see such an obvious visual improvement as a result of a more natural pH level. I could never fully understand why my tanks never had great SPS polyp extension, but now I know why. With all that being said, I should say that while my corals do look healthier than before, Calquasa isn't a magic potion that will mask all of your problems. As with any reef tank, occasionally some of my corals still struggle for reasons I can't work out. And I do have a couple of corals that are currently struggling despite my healthy pH level. My most recent ICP test showed slightly elevated levels of vanadium, zinc and iron, which suggests I might have a piece of equipment rusting somewhere, and if that's the case it would be unreasonable to expect pH to fix that particular problem, but what I'm really saying is that I don't think I can claim proof that Calquasa has made my corals more resilient in the time I've been using it. I'm not saying it doesn't do that, and it would make sense that a healthy coral is better equipped to deal with problems, I'm just saying that I can't prove that at the moment anyway. And finally, you may be interested to know that I dose Calquasa overnight, not 24 hours a day. I dose it from 8pm, which is roughly when my pH level starts to dip, all the way through to 2pm the next day, which is the point at which my pH has started to pick back up again. I did try dosing it over 24 hours, and while I found that smoothed out my alkalinity level, it meant I had a bigger pH swing from day to night. Whereas dosing Calquasa only when my pH is at its lowest gives me a much smoother pH swing, and therefore less of a drop. Now the likes of Chris Meckley say a flatter pH graph is more beneficial than a flatter alkalinity graph, and in any event, I've been able to flatten out my alkalinity graph by adjusting the times I dose ATI essentials during the rest of the day. And finally, you might be wondering what my pH level is right now, but unfortunately, I can't tell you. My pH meter reads over 9 at the moment, but I know that to be wrong and that the probe needs replacing. To prove it, I tested a sample of water from my Fluval Evo 13.5. That tank sits in my home office next to me breathing all day long, and I'm not dosing Calquasa in that tank, or anything else for that matter. And despite that, my pH probe gave that a reading of 8.65, which I'm pretty sure is scientifically impossible. In summary then, Calquasa has significantly increased the pH level in my tank from a near dangerous low of 7.75, to a healthy and natural peak of 8.38, and that has resulted in a huge increase in the uptake of calcium and alkalinity in my tank, with certain corals growing like crazy and others generally showing improved growth. And while I can't honestly say the colours are significantly better, the polyp extension is vastly improved, and that to my eye is the most significant visual improvement I notice day to day. So if you want your corals to live in less acidic water and grow faster and look healthier, you should watch my simple how-to guide on Calquasa next. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.